Welcome back to Crystal Clear! I'm Ostrich Vox, and as a musical, Steve Universe the movie was jam-packed with many songs that are stuck in our heads for months, if not years to come. Mostly because they're just so dang catchy, but also because their sequences and lyrics play into the overarching story of the film. One of these songs, without a doubt being Other Friends. Spinell's villain song that's easily become one of the most popular songs out of the entire franchise. Other Friends is also one of the songs that has a lot jam-packed into it, from the lyrics lyrics to visuals, things that I wasn't able to dedicate as much time as I wanted to in our respective movie breakdowns. Check those out if you haven't. So while we're all jamming to the song, I thought it would be fun to give it a more in-depth breakdown. Although mainly just its ties to the story, not the instruments or creative process behind the song, trust me I'd love to break down all that info, but Cartoon Network hasn't brought back a certain really in-depth podcast about the show that also goes into its behind the scenes history. Hmm, whatever that podcast may be called. And of course, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen the movie, go check that out, then come back here. Before we actually get into the singing, some spoken word is worth addressing. A lot of Spinell's vocabulary in itself is a nod to the rubber hose era of animation that her design is heavily influenced from. An example is her stating, isn't that swell, which is something you would still hear today, but it was much more prevalent back then with a lot of those cartoon characters. Spinell also refers to Earth as a nowhere planet with a bunch of nobodies, alluding to her role as Pink Diamond's best friend. While yes, many homeworld gems didn't view Earth in the highest regard, Spinell's anger here stems from the fact she was designed to be Pink's right-hand man, yet she was left behind, and next thing she knew, Pink had ceased to exist, moving on to friends Spinell didn't even know about. In Spinell's eyes, Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl? They are nobodies, especially Pearl, since she can still be looked down upon as a servant. Alright, jumping into the actual lyrics, the main chorus of this film starts with, that's right I heard the story over and over again. As we see later in the film, the diamond communicator broadcasting Steven's message to the universe only played once, and Spinell left that diamond communicator there as she later destroys it. Between this and her stating she has Steven's message to the universe on loop, there could be two possibilities here. One, diamond communicator have a replay option, which really isn't out of the realm of possibility. You're getting a message from the top of the chain. Why wouldn't there be a future to replay and make sure you catch everything? Although according to Aquamarine, the memory of some gems are perfect. But still, after Spinell had the news break to her, she could have replayed the message a few times over and over until everything fully processed. Then there's option two. Hearing the story over and over again could be more figurative. In reality, Spinell could have only heard the message once, when it was broadcast, but of course it was stuck in her head, taunting her to the point where it felt like she's heard it hundreds of times. On her way towards Earth, she could only hear Steven's voice, her only train of thought being White Diamond's tale of Steven. How great he made everything. Driving Spinell further and further into insanity. From that we have G and Swell to finally meet her other friends. Once again we have the word Swell popping up in there. And we have Spinell finally meeting those she assumes Pink abandoned her for. Although not finally as in it took Spinell forever to arrive to the planet. Obviously the events of these films happen over the course of like a day or so. But for all that waiting Spinell did, she's finally getting a look at what kept Pink Diamond away from her. It also implies paired with the flashbacks we see later, that Spinell didn't have much interaction with those outside of Pink Diamond. We know her and Pearl have a small history, I'm assuming mainly just awkward glances from Pearl here and there, but I believe this possible isolation from everyone else was a result of Pink Pearl. Pink Pearl and Pink Diamond were goofing off and palling around rather often, hiding their playful nature from the other diamonds. Assumably, something happened not too long after Blue Diamond warned Pink about the organic creatures from the Kyanite colony being let loose on Homeworld, and how that could push White Diamond to take Pink's Pearl away from her, which we know was an event that came to pass. So the Diamond solution after the unknown incident that cost Pink Pearl her eye and freedom was to supply Pink with a pearl, our pearl, that she could only interact with for diamond duties, such as running a colony. Although yes, obviously Spinell and R Pearl would have been granted to Pink long before she was given a colony, as confirmed in the episode Now We're Only Falling Apart. And Spinell will be Pink Diamond's best friend, filling that void Pink Pearl left in terms of goofing off and having fun. It's just something a Pearl wasn't allowed to do. So Pink could play with Spinell in solitude for the 
affair moments she had. Now, Spinel gets to meet those Pink Diamond had a close relationship with, but under unfavorable circumstances for everyone involved. Now, I did touch on this in my breakdown, but once Spinel descends from the injector and onto the ground, her strike on the Crystal Gems is done in practically one big move, with many steps, only taking one moment to breathe when she reveals her rejuvenator. It's also worth mentioning one more time that this sequence was storyboarded by Mickey Brewster and animated by guest crewniverse Takafumi Hori, who worked in the episode Mindful Education. A truly powerful animation combination. Yes, I know, I'm corny. Considering Pearl was Pink Diamond's Pearl, and thus the only one present that Spinel has it gist of, Spinel's remarks to Pearl seem a bit more personal, and we'll touch on that in a second. But first, special thanks to today's sponsor, NordVPN. While surfing the internet, privacy should be the top priority. Anyone can take your data within the blink of an eye, and who knows what they'd do with it. One false click, and some stranger you don't even know is keeping track of your every move. Spooky stuff, right? A VPN is the easiest way to protect yourself from these breaches in security, and NordVPN offers a wide variety of different locations for you to pop on over and cause your IP address to be hidden from any devious schemers out there who want it. I always wanted to travel the world, and at the very least, now my IP address can within the press of a button. A perk that I personally love is that some shows I want to watch on Netflix are only available in other territories. For example, Steve Universe, not on Netflix in the US, but with NordVPN, boom, there it is. If you head over to nordvpn.org slash the roundtable and use the code the roundtable at checkout, you can get a 75% discount on a three-year plan with one month free. I know, it's too good to pass up on. All of this doesn't just apply to you surfing on your computer as well, by the way. NordVPN works for your browser, phone, tablet, pretty much any device that has an app store. As you can imagine, it comes in pretty handy. One more time, that's nordvpn.org slash the roundtable and use the code the roundtable, one word, at checkout. Alright, so while not a remark, after Garnet's wings, Spinel flicks Pearl in the nose, which is something we see Pink Diamond do to Spinel in the flashback within Drift Away. Knowing Pink Diamond never intended to come back, this flick on the nose feels much more condescending to Spinel. So while Spinel flicking Pearl's nose was of malicious intent, we now know that move in particular came from a place of pain. Seconds after when Spinel grabs Pearl and begins to dangle her, notice how it's Pearl in particular she sings to with, What did she say about me? What what does she say? She's inquiring from Pearl in particular on any possible mention of herself after Pink Diamond abandoned her in the garden. After all, Pearl did verbally react to Spinel's presence, so it's not far-fetched to believe Spinel is under the impression that Pearl was in on everything, or at least was filled in on everything. Through her sinister motives, Spinel is clinging onto the false hope that she was still relevant in Pink Diamond's thoughts and conversation. That Pink Diamond didn't just forget about her. This carries on with more broad statements to Garnet and Amethyst. Asking what did they do without her? Did they play any games? Once again, tying into Spinel's purpose. As Pink Diamond's assigned best friend, she's eager to find out how much she's missed, probably to justify her anger. Really, she's insinuating that Pink Diamond's life was better without her, and she despises that notion. It plays into the theme of self-loathing that we see with Spinel. One of the more powerful lyrics is when she slithers up to Steven, questioning if he thought Spinel would ever find out about him, once again re-establishing that Spinel is under the wrong impression that Pink Diamond filled everyone in that she left Spinel to rot in the garden, that Steven's existence was supposed to be a grand secret from Spinel and her alone. Although yes, you is a broad term for all the Crystal Gems, did they think they could evade her forever? But as Pink Diamond's offspring, Steven has a special spot on Spinel's list of enemies. However, Spinel's perception changes real soon. After grabbing the four Crystal Gems, twisting, or spinning herself, so they can collide into one another, Spinel lands on top of the observatory. Pearl reacts in disbelief to Spinel's return, causing Steven to ask who she even is, which causes Spinel to realize with one simple question that Pink Diamond didn't mention her once on her thousands of years on the planet. At this point in Steven's life, it's clear he's in the know as much as possible pertaining to his mother's legacy. So not knowing about Spinel throws her for a loop. Her face emoting confusion, realization, and anger within seconds, twitching before throwing herself back into song. Who am I? Who am I? What are you even saying? 
From her perspective, it's crazy to fathom the idea that those closest to Pink and her own son wouldn't know who her best friend is. But Spinel follows this up with, I'm the loser of the game you didn't know you were playing, which is a loaded statement. The more obvious nod is that loser of the game is referring to Pink Diamond's game with Spinel in the garden, which Spinel feels as if she lost considering Pink Diamond ceased to exist, but Spinel lost her purpose. And yeah, Steven didn't know he was playing the game, but he possesses Pink Diamond's gemstone, so by technicality, he would be continuing the game when she passed on, which is crazy to think about. During every hardship Steven has endured, Spinel was waiting in the garden, playing a cruel, sadistic game. Let's play another game this time I get to win? Show Spinel's desperation to feel as if she can achieve victory at something. In this case, playing a different game where everything Pink Diamond fought for crumbles at Spinel's hands. Just the way Sarah Styles delivers that, this time I get to win, sends chills. You get a true feel for how hurt Spinel feels. Spinel then spits out several phrases that relate back to the concept of playing a game. Citing this from Genius, Lives on the line is a bet or wager in a high stakes game. It also refers to the fact that Spinel Spinel's injector puts literal lives on the line, with every organic being on the planet in danger. Winner takes all refers to the rules of the game as referring to the final winner. If Spinel wins, she'd be taking everything from Steven. Ready or not, let's begin, suits children's games such as hide and seek. Also, she belts this right before launching at the gem, so it was a fair warning. There's also just very eerie juxtaposition with the song. It's very upbeat and fast paced, whereas the lyrics shift back and forth between melancholy and raw anger. It's like almost every song by one of my favorite bands, The Wombats. Sounds nice, but if you listen to the lyrics, you're gonna have a feels trip. From here, Spinel maneuvers and manipulates her elastic bite to catapult to the gems, poofing them. But notice how she's altered the lyrics to now sing, beat her other friends, instead of meet her other friends. Once again, highlighting her attempt to justify and validate her anger at Pink Diamond. Oh, you left me for these clowns? I'ma kill them. Are there any other songs from Steven the movie you guys want us to break down? Future videos may contain breakdowns of two songs in one, the first being a popular request and then the other other being a song that I really just want to talk about. But for that, and just your general feelings on this song and scene, sound off in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RhymetableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Austin Fox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Austin Fox, signing out.